we're trying to do the best to uh, write research papers about it so that it, the pandemic could be analyzed and its effect on the economy could also be analyzed. Uh, but one problem with this paper is that because they started out so early, they didn't have the complete information about the pandemic as well. So there are a few points in this paper which are also wrong, but I won't be focusing on this, those points. I'll mainly be focusing on how they've used dynamic models. So uh, the key question that this paper tried to answer is about the COVID-19 epidemic. So how much uh, can the government mitigate the problems caused by the pandemic? And when would be the good time to open up the economy again? And also how much, how many precautions would people do take on their own? So this model is basically a neoclassical growth model along with an SIR model. So this is a susceptible infectious recovered model, which is widely used in epidemiology. And this paper builds up on work by Eichenbaum, Rebolo and Trabant which was also another paper published in 2020. Uh, and in both these papers, the idea is that infections basically happen when people uh, work or consume outside. So when people interact socially. So there are a few differences compared to other papers that were coming out at the time. There was a uh, heterogeneous consumption sectors, uh, and these heterogeneous consumption sectors differ in infection risk. So the idea is that uh, people stop going to restaurants and instead they started to eat at home. They stopped going to in, uh, university or their workplaces and they started studying and working from home. So they, instead of consuming in the outside sector, they started consuming at home. So the susceptible agents started making conscious decisions and shifted their consumption to the low infection sector. And this low infection sector is basically home. And in this way, they lowered their own infection risk. So uh, they basically wrote the model in this way that living agents uh, who all belong to either the susceptible infected or recovered uh, population. These three uh, populations have a utility of this form, uh, utility summation of beta raised to t, u, c, j, t, uh, n, t. And the form of this uh, utility function is basically log consumption minus theta uh, quadratic labor, so n square by two. And we can kind of think of this uh, c, j, t as an integral of consumption. So c, j, t, k raised to one, minus one by eta dk, the whole raised to eta by eta minus one. And here this eta is elasticity of substitution. And Along with this susceptible infected and recovered population, we also have one more population, which is the dead population. And the dead population doesn't have any utility. So their utility is equal to zero. Uh, one equation that they kind of wrote was basically that one unit of labor is equal to some value A into one unit of any good. And in this way, we can write the budget constraint as integral from uh, zero to one of C J T K uh, D K is equal to A N J T. Uh, in the paper, they also just assume that uh, the production and labor markets are competitive, they're linear and frictionless, and also that these markets clear. So the idea is that for the S I R model, or SRI model, however you would want to write it. Uh, agents can be either susceptible, infected, recovered, or dead. So we basically divide the agents into different population fractions. So ST, IT, and RT for susceptible, infected, and recovered. And we say that infection is transmitted while either consuming or autonomously. So with the overall contagion parameters as being 
pi s and pi a. So pi s is when uh, you get infected after uh, conducting a social activity and pi a is when you're just randomly uh, infected. So the idea here is that you can either be infected while you are either studying or working or consuming in a social area where there are other people who are also infected or you might just be walking down the street at some point in time and at, by some uh, unfortunate event, you might get infected with the virus. So that's the pi A. Uh, there's also a variety specific rel relative of contagiousness, which is given here as an integral of phi K dK, which is equal to one. So the idea here is that depending on the variety of goods that an agent consumes, their social interaction that happens will have a different impact on the contagion. So if uh, a person tends to consume a lot of different varieties of goods, so if they uh, go into a lot of different places to consume those goods, then it's likely that they'll be, they're, they're at a higher risk of getting infected. So that is what this is trying to quantify. So the probability for a susceptible agent to get to become infected is given in this equation here. Uh, tau t, which is the probability, is equal to pi s i t integral of phi k c s t k c i t k into d k plus uh, pi a i t. So this is basically saying that the probability of getting infected this depends on the overall parameter pi s, the number of infected people it. And these two parts are basically uh, the standard SIR model, but it also depends on how susceptible uh, the, depends on how the susceptible agents consume in a particular sector. So that's this, how much the infected agents consume in a particular sector, which is this, along with the variety specific contagiousness factor, which is this. And there's also some autonomous infection happening at a rate of pi A. So this is just the random, you're walking down the street and then you go for a test. Uh, even though you haven't interacted with anybody and you stayed in self-isolation because you were randomly walking down the street, you got infected by some unfortunate incident. So that's what the pi A, this term is looking at. And this entire term is basically the social interaction uh, when you get infected due to social interactions. Now, uh, looking at inflation dynamics, we will let TT denote the newly infected. So TT is equal to pi T, which is the probability of getting infected or for a susceptible population into ST, which is a total susceptible population. So ST plus one is equal to ST minus TT. Uh, IT plus one is equal to IT plus TT minus uh, pi r plus pi d into it. So of the susceptible population, there's some proportion that's recovered and some proportion that's either dead. So we have to subtract those, but we have to add the newly infected to the currently infected. And for RT plus one, which is the next periods recovered, it's basically equal to RT plus the recovered population from the infected. Uh, now, because this was written so early on in the pandemic, they did not account for people who might have gotten infected the, for the second time. So that's one of the issues, one of the issues that uh, we would have with this paper. Next, we look at the choices of the different consumers for infected and recovered agents, they don't particularly care about where they would consume. So if we put X in I and R, then labor of X uh, for period T is equal to one by under root theta and consumption of X for a particular period, which is basically equal to for the particular sector, which is basically just equal to, so CX TK is equal to equivalent to CXT and that's equal to A by uh, square root of theta. But then 
choice for susceptible agents is different because they will have to choose between uh, going into a high infection uh, sector or going into a low infection sector. So what we can do here is substitute this consumption into the uh, infection equation, what we just saw here. So we have the infection equation here again, and this CITK term here is equal to CIT, which is equal to A pi square root of theta, which is what we got from here. Now, after we take the first order, uh, first order condition with respect to consumption of the variety K, uh, which is this phi K, we have this U1 CST comma NST uh, brackets CST by CSTK raised to one by eta is equal to uh, lambda SBT plus lambda tau T into pi T A by pi uh, by square root of theta into IT phi k. So over here, this term is basically the Lagrange multiplier on the budget constraint. And this term here is the Lagrange multiplier on the infection constraint. And the remaining terms in the equations are the ones that I've already explained before. But the idea here is that for the consumption, there is an additional cost in the form uh, due to the risk of infection. Uh, but then this cost will differ according to the different sectors that they decide to consume in. Now, uh, the parameters are set according to the paper by Eichenbaum, Rebello, and Tremont. Uh, but the basic idea is that we have a baseline model where there is no autonomous uh, infection. So pi A is equal to zero. And we set pi S in such a way to get a 10% constant decline in the homogeneous sector infection rate. What uh, what the authors here did, uh, Kruger, uh, Ulrich, and Z, they basically created two equally sized sectors. So one sector was to eat or work at home, and the other one was to eat or work outside. Uh, the infection risk from the first sector, which was to eat at home, was phi one is equal to zero point two, and the second sector was phi two is equal to 1.8. And this was based on the information that they had at the time, which was that uh, eat or work outside was nine times more infectious than eating or working at home. They also looked at a few different variations. So what would happen if the value of this uh, pi a term here would be greater than zero? Uh, and there would be a 50% susceptible limit. Uh, what would happen if they vary the value of uh, the elasticity of substitution eta? And what would happen if they had a somewhat lower uh, in, uh, risk of social infection? So the pi s would be lower. So those are the things that they tried. Uh, here we have the parameter values from Kruger et al, the paper. Uh, the main thing to note here is the value of a. So since they've set the value to be around 39, they could have also set it to be higher or lower. And that will strongly affect the model because this value of A is basically the utility that the agents get when they are alive. If they put it at a very high value, the agents would prefer not to die and to consume for the next period. But if they put it at a very low value, there might be a chance that the agents would just prefer to die instead. Uh, so they would not take make any changes to their uh, they would not take any actions to change their conditions and they would just uh, do their best to get infected. Now, uh, we have the aggregate consumption uh, from the paper. So this baseline basically has eta equals to So that is the baseline. Uh, and the idea here is that the baseline is not that far off from uh, a normal condition. So uh, 
even though there is some level of reduction in aggregate consumption, it is not a drastic decrease. Uh, next, if we lower the uh, elasticity of substitution to three, then the idea is that people do not prefer to substitute their consumption. So because of that, the aggregate consumption falls lower than the baseline case. Uh, next, we look at a low value of pi s. So this basically means that there's less infection, but in this case, uh, the aggregate consumption falls even more. Oh no, not this one. Uh, the aggregate consumption doesn't really fall, it stays basically the same. And lastly, the phi equals one causes a 10% decline in the consumption. So this is around 10 here. But the idea here is that eventually, parts of the population will either recover or they'll die out. So the consumption uh, will much more quickly recover to its original state. So it's higher than any of the other three. And next we look at consumption under different values of the phi. So a higher phi value here basically indicates higher infectability as fewer people adjust to eat or work at home and more people continue to eat or work outside. So because of that, the initial consumption for a higher values of phi uh, declines a lot because more people are getting infected and uh, more people are either uh, uh, dying out or they're getting recovered. But the idea here is that even though there's a huge fall for the uh, during the for the first wave itself, after that wave is over, the consumption recovers much more quickly. So even though the phi one here it reaches almost ten percent, uh, as we get to the one fiftieth peak, it's higher than all of the other values, especially the lowest one, which was uh, phi one is equal to zero point one. The green line here, uh, and around. 120 weeks or so, it reaches higher than the green line. <clears throat> Next, we look at our baseline comparison of some of the uh, impulse responses. So we look at aggregate consumption and aggregate labor. Uh, so these are basically showing us the economic dynamics and they're quite similar to each other as well. Uh, the rest of the plots here, the infected, susceptible, recovered and deceased will show us the population dynamics. Uh, next, we kind of look at the results when the value of pi a is greater than zero. So these results are a lot different than the previous results that we had when uh, pi a, when pi a was equal to zero. In these results, people do get infected just by themselves, by some accident or unfortunate mishap. And in the worst case scenario for this, uh, there's almost 50% uh, of the population that's been infected uh, and 25% of the population is deceased. So, uh, in the case where phi is equal to one, uh, there's a large amount of population that has died out. And so almost 50% of the initial population has been, uh, has had to recover from the virus. Uh, next, we look at the comparison of results when uh, pi a is equal to zero and when pi a is greater than zero. So as I've stated there, when pi a is greater than zero, uh, cases are much worse than pi a is equal to zero. So if we look at just the percentage of deceased population, uh, for the pi a is 
not equal to zero, it goes down to, it, it's basically almost around, uh, around 65% ish. And it's especially worse when uh, the elasticity of substitution is low, uh, where it, when it goes up to almost 80% uh, or so. Uh, whereas when pi a is equal to zero, uh, zero it's much lower. So it's around 30% uh, in the baseline case and 60% in the lower elasticity of substitution case. Now, uh, one more thing that they tried out was vary the values of the elasticity of substitution. So the value of eta, uh, they also tried to uh, make it as high as 1000. So that's what this indicates. So people, if we make it that high, then people substitute into the other sectors really quickly. And that causes the disease to die out on its own, which is why uh, the values were the, the impulse responses where the value of eta is very high. So hundred and thousand, uh, the infected population and consumption, all of the factors, basically they recover immediately. But the problem there is that that is too optimistic to look at. Uh, since we know that people won't always be able to either adjust their consumption or there might be some other factors that prevent them from adjusting their consumption. Now, next we look at the low infection sector versus the high infection sector. So in this case, uh, the low infection sector was phi one is equal to 0 0.2 and high infection was phi two is equal to 1.8. And this, this chart basically shows the different sectoral shifts. So in the baseline scenario, uh, there's a decline in the percentage of people working in the high infection sector. So it goes from around 15% to uh, around 30%. So yeah, you can kind of see that decline happening here on the blue line. So almost 25 to 30% of people in high infection sectors have lost their jobs. And this reflects what has happened in real life as well. So people in airlines and hospitality lost their jobs, but uh, the low infection sectors have started to hire as well. So the percentage of population employed in low infection sector has increased. So we can kind of interpret this as uh, other industries picking up the slack of the extra workers. So grocery stores started uh, hiring a lot of workers as they started to get reallocated from high infection sectors to low infection sectors. And companies like Amazon as well started to hire a lot of people to meet the demand that they were facing of everybody working from home and so on. So uh, 